Hey guys, as you probably noticed, I have a new background, and that's because I'm in a new place. I moved into my own apartment, and no, you cannot know where it is. So in my new place, I am doing a new thing called Genre Outreach Month. As it is week one, I thought it'd be a good idea to do what I said I was going to do for once and actually review this book called How to Woo a Reluctant Lady by Sabrina Jeffries. As usual, I'm going to talk about what it's about and what I liked and did not like about the book. So first, what it's about. Main character S, Minerva, is determined to make her grandmother drop the ridiculous idea that if she does not marry within a certain amount of time that she will completely disown her in a way as in like not give her her inheritance and stop allowing her to uh, live under her roof. Minerva quite obviously is enraged by this and she decides to hold husband auditions. Much to her surprise, a young man by the name of Giles, well Giles Masters, comes and auditions to be her husband. Little does he know, Minerva has been in love with Giles for a very, very, very long time. As they agree to do this fake engagement thing, uh, things get a little out of control, there are a lot of dark plots going on, and things escalate to a stunning climax, no pun intended. So what I liked about the book. First off, what I really enjoy that I don't really see a lot in these kind of books is uh, the tastefulness of the love scene. There were no love scenes that were superfluous or unneeded. Uh, everything in this book was quintessential to either the plot or to the character development. That being said, when there was a love scene and it didn't need to be uh, 14 pages long, it would just be referred to as making love and they'd drop it there and they'd move on to where the book actually needed to be, which I really actually appreciated. What I also liked about the book is um, the intertwining of many different plots that didn't get complicated and it kept me entertained even when I got frustrated with one plot, there was another one to pick it straight up. Rolly chairs make this multiple perspective thing so much easier, just by him. What I also liked is that there was a gradual building of trust and understanding and um, basically the relationship. It, it grew at a steady pace. It wasn't overly sexual and it wasn't overly gushy, which I, I really appreciated because once it gets into, um, how do I put this nicely? Once it gets into Titanic portions, I get a little turned off by it when it's too much of one thing and not enough of the other, but this had equal proportions of everything that I really, really liked in a book. What I did not like, because of the multitude of plots going on, I think it was three or four in total, um, it was really hard to recall when something was being used and then it showed up again at the end. Um, like, you take note of something when you're reading it, like, that sounds a little out of place, and then they do end up using it at the end, but it's kind of hard to do that when you're trying to figure out which plot it's going into. Minerva has her own plot, which is Minerva's parents' deaths were being investigated, uh, but it never really came to fruition. Nothing really came of it. And um, as it turns out, her distant cousin and his son start snooping around her parents' death site. And so uh, she starts investigating that and uh, with the help of Giles, and they end up um, uncovering some pretty cool stuff. Giles Masters, on the other hand, is a spy for the English, and he finds that um, he is being blackmailed into allowing a criminal to have his way with what he wants and stuff like that. And he doesn't want that to happen because if it gets out into the press, then it, his entire reputation will be ruined and his life with Minerva will be ruined. And that is a no-no. It is a romantic no-no. Now, though they had their own separate plots, and that was one of the things that I liked, what I didn't like was that it was kind of convoluted and ish at some point. That's not a word, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? In Plotland, it felt a little eh. Also, what I didn't like was there was a huge plot hole 
Which I mean is determined to happen after um, you have four different plots going on at the same time. So I I see why she kind of forgot, but I, it bothered me. Maybe it didn't bother anyone else. Maybe it, it's part of, you know, being a mysterious thing. But it wasn't even mentioned again. And it was like, oh, like gasp, and then no one remembered it. So all in all, I would give this 3.7 stars. So when rounded up, four. It was really good. It was tastefully done. Uh, there was enough plot to keep me interested, but enough relationship building to make it realistic. The only things I didn't like was that it was convoluted at some point plot-wise and that um, there was one major plot hole that, that really irked me. Um, but I would recommend it if you're into adult romance. If you've never read one before, I'd probably start out with something like this rather than something like this. I mean, you can just tell that's full of jalapeno, hot, steamy interactions. But this was really well done. It was really sweet, and I liked it. So coming up next week is Delirium by Lauren Oliver. It's, it's a hardcover, but I got it at this super secret store that I can't tell you guys about, and they do, like, resales, and this was, like, $8.00 instead of like 15 that it would have been at Barnes & Noble or something. So uh, I can't tell you where it is located, but um, secret. So I'm really excited to read this book. Hopefully it'll be all woohoo. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and we'll enjoy the next one. This, I, I'm thinking it's probably going to be every Sunday, but it may switch between Sundays and Saturdays. So I will see you guys soon. Bye!